Hey everybody, um, it's been a very busy time on our homestead, so it's been a while since we made a video. A lot to catch you guys up on. But today we want to focus on some time-saving tips for your homestead. So stay tuned as always to the Vincent Family Homestead. Alright, so one of the things that uh, just time saving measure I've learned is just to keep this, I keep this bucket here while I'm weeding the garden out. Uh, I can I put the weeds in here and then I can take these over and feed them to the rabbits. We'll show you that in just a minute, but I'm just in a raised bed as I'm weeding. I'm just pulling all this up. It's pretty loose. And you'll see here in just a second, the rabbits really like it. You're kind of doing two things at once. You're weeding your garden spot, and you're also um, providing some food for the rabbits. So. It doesn't take long with these raised beds that the ground's really soft. Let me pull these pretty easy as you can see. Got some collard greens are trying to regrow from the roots. It's kind of weird. I don't know if we'll have enough time for them to do anything before the heat kills them. So basically I just want to fill this up. Uh, look around. Just spearmint. I feed some of that to them because it's kind of invasive. Moves everywhere. So I just even though that's a purposeful plan I can People have talked about on one of our videos about the grass feeding, and uh, one of the most feedbacks we get is you know, about diversity. But as you can see, we've got a lot of diverse plant material that's going to these rabbits, not just Bermuda grass. Ragweeds, our kale, and parsley, and all this stuff is going to seed, so hopefully we can capture some of that. So you can see that here. I've uh, got some stuff growing around the edges. Just stuff all that down here in this bucket. While I'm weeding. So really what I'm doing is really two chores at once. I'm at once I'm gathering food for the rabbits and I'm weeding the garden at the same time. So yeah, we're just chilling here now and I try to make sure to give my nursing mothers and um, my breeding stock the best of the food that I get, just to keep them um, as healthy as possible. And then what I got, if I've got anything to give, I'm gonna make sure they get them. As you can see, what we're doing here, we're just putting these. These were weeds from the garden, right? What are you gonna do with them? Well. Rabbits love to eat them, so we'll just go here. We'll give her a little bit more variety. I've got some variety of different kinds of weeds and stuff, and she'll eat most of that up. There's... One of the things that we've uh, changed in our rabbitry that saved us a lot of times is that these um, gravity fed water systems they feed off a five gallon bucket. You can buy them, and I'll try to put a link in the comments for you to find for those of you who are interested in that. Um, it's gravity fed, uh, it comes with a nipple here, you buy the line, 
the uh, T-sections, the uh, water nipples on the end, and this is cut down probably from a 20 minute, 30 minute job a day of feed, filling all these individual rabbit water bottles to maybe once, at the most twice a week, refilling these five gallon buckets. And where it took us maybe 25 minutes or so, maybe 20, 25 minutes to get in here and out of here on a, on a heavy day. Um, now maybe five minutes at the most, run through here, throw, throw the feed out and be done with it. So that definitely saves time. And anytime you can save 20 minutes, 30 minutes here or there, that's just 20 or 30 minutes that you can put into something else more productive. So this has been a really great time saver for us. Okay, behind me here is the, the new expanded goat area uh, that we were able to make more space for the goats to move them. You can see that there. Uh, several things that we've done here to make this more efficient for us. Um, a couple things you're going to have to do on a daily basis is feed and water. I mean, that's just bottom line. So if you can find ways to basically automate that or give yourself several days where you don't necessarily have to be there, on top of the water and the feed, that's good. You know, you do like to get out and interact with these animals on a daily basis. Uh, they're familiar with you, you're familiar with them, but if you have a couple days where you have to be away from home, it just gives you peace of mind. It makes you a little bit more relaxed about the homestead. We have automatic feeders for the chickens. Um, our chickens are free range, but if we needed to, I could put feed out for them for about two or three days uh, without even having to return to feed them. We have a water, a lot the same. We started out with these uh, gravity automatic water things, but really the old fashioned trough ended up making more sense because you don't have to take it apart. You don't have to do anything but just fill it up. And it holds about four or five gallons of water. So water troughs full, feeders full. Uh, the goats, I don't know if you can see the goat, goats from here, but they got a, um, a hay rack I made from um, fencing wire, they've got their dry feed there. We could also feed them for uh, maybe a day or so if we needed to, to walk away from them and not just have to be on top of it. And the key to that is giving yourself some flexibility and some, some time. So that if you wake up one morning and you just don't feel great, you don't have to run out here and do chores for four or five hours. You got to maybe take a day off. Or if you go on vacation, you know, you got the liberty uh, it's easier for somebody to come through and just make sure everything's in place than have to find somebody to come and feed several different animals and, and all that. So it, it, there's a lot of convenience factors. So point being, think about these kind of things and be thinking about how you can make it life easier on yourself. Um, how you can reduce some of these repetitive time investments and give yourself more time to do what you wanted to do when you started this and that's enjoy and participate in this life style homestead. Okay, these are our new little baby turkeys we got. This is a little one. We can't tell if they're uh, male or female yet, but um, we gotta get about five months old or so before you really can tell. But they're only a few days old, so see their legs, little turkey legs, and he wants to get back in there with his uh, siblings so we're about to put them back in but I can show you real quick and um, we have this just little old coop area that we're keeping them in and there's a little heat lamp over here to keep them warm because we still have some chilly nights this is a watering system um, and then we got the feeder which is a little bit deeper in there and if you can see all the way in there we have different varieties. Um, they're mainly there in the middle. They're hiding from us right now in the back. Right. They're. Um, let's see if we can move this. If you can get it a little bit deeper in there. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Maybe you can see some of them. There we go. So we have um, some bronze, um, some bourbon reds, and some black Spanish breeds so far so hopefully these will be ready to get out on the yard in about three or four weeks right and 
they'll be in this area here. Yeah. Kind of like a little small run until they get. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, sorry, it's messy. We. Right. But, but um, it'll be like until they're about, I'd say, eight weeks old, and about eight weeks old, we'll open the gate and they can start coming and going and say well, please. Well, and also if you don't, if you notice right here, these bunch of stick kind of tree area, we made that, and this is where they would like to uh, particularly roost. We got two grown turkey uh, males, and that they'll fly up and they'll get up there in the midst of those sticks and stuff and roost and. It's a really good spot for them. Tell them how much you love your husband, how awesome he is. I love him so much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video as usual and the footage of the various things on our homestead. Drop in any time. We'll have a new video coming by shortly. We love you guys. Appreciate you guys. And we'll talk to you next time on the Vincent Family Homestead. Thanks for watching the video. Please don't forget to comment below and tell us what you thought about it and subscribe as well. Y'all have a good day.